Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. By now, everyone is aware of Freemasonry, but why does no one ever discuss the more secretive esoteric lodges such as SRIA or the Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia? This quasi-Masonic order was based on an even older German esoteric order known as the Order of the Golden Rosy Cross, a fraternity that based its initiation on the precepts of alchemy. Out of the SRIA also came the real-life Hogwarts, known as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. This fraternity was much more than the modern-day drinking clubs we know as Freemasonry. The Golden Dawn practiced an extremely complex and intricate system of ritual magic. There was even a magical war that broke out between its members, a battle that culminated with the poet W.B. Yeats kicking Aleister Crowley down a flight of stairs. YouTube conspiracy videos are kindergarten. The rabbit hole goes much, much deeper for those willing to look. You know, I make these videos every day, and I still come across stuff like this I've never heard of. I would think that I, as much as I look at this stuff, because I look... I, I didn't just start looking at this kind of stuff when I started making these videos. I started making these videos because I watched these videos. And I didn't like the way the videos I was watching were being made. So I decided to make them different. But I never heard of this. And it blows my mind just how much crazy stuff is out there. Just the magnitude of everything. Archaeologists suggest it's only a coincidence, but the ancient handbag symbol, as it is known, has become a puzzling enigma for scholars worldwide, since it appears in ancient carvings all over the world. The conventional belief is that the ancient civilizations around the planet and throughout history developed independently with little or no connection with one another. However, this symbol has been found in numerous ancient cultures, starting at Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, dating back 11,600 years. It also appears in ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, ancient Greece, and the Balkans. Strangely, despite vast distances and the Atlantic Ocean between the continents, the ancient handbag symbol also shows up in Mesoamerican cultures like the Toltec, the Olmec, and the Maya. Here you can even see it in an ancient temple from India. Some speculate this mysterious symbol might represent the transfer of ancient knowledge. Others believe it might even symbolic. I would say that would make the most sense is that that's symbolizing them passing on knowledge because you think of like The Walking Dead. What was one of the big turning points for them in that series whenever they everyone finally got hope is whenever they were handed that big book that taught them how to farm and, and build structures and do plumbing and electric repair and all this stuff. So it was like, oh my gosh, now we can make it. It was literally a book of knowledge. That bag could have been the container with the book of knowledge in it. I'd say it's a plausible theory. Something strange is going on with Oprah Winfrey South African School for Girls. Go look and see what happened to them girls. Go so Oprah opened the school all the way back in 2007. And since the school's opening, it has been marred with many different controversies. You see, shortly after the school opened, a matron of the school was charged with touching several of the girls in a very inappropriate manner. When the crime eventually came to light, Oprah herself went to fire the school's headmistress. Then, in another incident that happened in 2011, law enforcement investigated the body of a newborn that was found in one of the students' bags. Apparently, one of the girls at the school gave birth, but there were no charges filed against her after this incident. There were also other scandals the school was involved in, like in 2009 when seven students were suspended for S harassing their classmates. And now there's a new scandal that the school is known for, as many people online have started spreading rumors that girls are disappearing from the school. According to these rumors, several students from the school have gone missing. But as of right now, nobody is sure why these rumors have started, as there is currently no news reporting that there have been missing girls at Oprah's school. Regardless, these rumors have managed to go viral all over TikTok and Twitter, and they continue to be spread to this day. I think Oprah's got some explaining to do. She's turning into the next Ellen. Every time I turn around, I'm hearing something else shady about her. That whole uh, fund that her and The Rock supposedly put together. I mean, if that doesn't show you her true colors, nothing else will. But I've always had a bad feeling about that lady. Uh, she's always come across as, uh, we'll just say anti-other ethnicities. She's always come across that way to me. It's always rubbed me the wrong way. Is there any evidence that confirms man and dinosaurs live together? Uh, here's one out at uh, Havasu by Canyons. Here's one out at Natural Bridges National Monument. Here's another one out at San Rafael Swell in Utah. Here's one up at Lake Superior in Canada. Over in uh, Angkor in Cambodia, 
The Ishtar Gate in Babylon, built by order of Nebuchadnezzar. It's got a reptilian tongue, scales, hip structure so that it raises its body up off the ground. By technical definition, that's a dinosaur right there. Here's one up at Lake Superior in Canada. You can see a boat in the background. I always like that. And you can see a lot of dinosaurs had things along the back of their neck like that. Carlisle Cathedral in northern England, a man named Bishop Bell died around the year 1500. He's buried in the church, and there's this brassing that goes along the outside here. And if you zoom up on that, there's all sorts of animals etched in it. You get up there, you'd readily recognize them, then you get to some that look just like dinosaurs. Down in Australia, the Aborigines had this painted up of a creature that they'd hunted because it had eaten one of their kinsmen. So they drew the kinsmen inside here, and they were sitting there trying to go after it because they wanted to get their kinsmen back. They named it Yaru. Of course, that's a water creature. Technical definition would not be included as a dinosaur. Over in uh, Angkor in Cambodia, uh, there was a temple, whole st- uh, section of temples and structures uh, found. And one of them uh, there at Ta Prom, they, they found what looks like a, a muzzled stegosaur. This is being battled out in the peer review. They think they've found a second uh, one of these as well. So it's uh, pretty exciting to see this. The Ishtar Gate in Babylon, built by order of Nebuchadnezzar as this and an auric, an extinct type of cattle that alternate going up. Look at this. It's got a reptilian tongue, scales, hip structure so that it raises its body up off the ground. By technical definition, that's a dinosaur right there. So we see hosts of different examples of things like this as well. If we flip towards science, what are these? Do you guys know what these are? Yeah, red blood cells. Red blood cells don't last very long. Now, there was a researcher, uh, Dr. Mary Schweitzer, out west, they'd uh, found this T-Rex femur. It was kind of down in a ravine. They couldn't get it out. So they brought a helicopter in. Well, it wouldn't fit on the helicopter. So they decided to do something nobody had done before. They took that T-Rex femur, psh, broke it in half, put it on the uh, helicopter, took it back to the lab. They got in there, let's, let's take a look. And lo and behold, they found some preserved red blood cells. Now, they were in shock. There is, uh, you know, they were like, there is no way... Red blood cells could last like 65, 68 million years old. There's just no way. So you know what they said? Wow, I guess red blood cells really do last 65, 68 million years old. But since then, they've cracked open some more uh, T-Rex bones, and they found some soft tissue. Some of it was stretchy. There's a video online of uh, this very first photo where it kind of stretches and pulls across. It gave off an odor. They found a vein. I know some creationists that cracked open a triceratops horn, and they found soft tissue as well. And I've got some nice SEM photos here. You zoom up to this one. They're looking inside of a vein, and you're seeing crystalline material. It's absolutely amazing. Now, let me ask you, does it make more sense this is a matter of thousands of years old as opposed to, say, 60 to 70 million years old? I think it makes a lot more sense. It makes more sense to me that they're thousands of years old instead of millions of years old. We know that things can fossilize very, very quickly. Carbon dating is is junk science as far as I'm concerned, at least in the way that they choose to use it. It could be used effectively in certain scenarios. But clearly, in case no one else picked up on it, this is all the makings for us to open a real Jurassic Park. So I'm sure that's in the pipeline. Coming soon to a nightmare near you. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. Con el mío sí se alcanza a ver bien, güey. Ya se los paso. Sí, güey. Elena, ¿qué tengo más? Sí, sí, es una nave. No mames, güey. Man. That is pretty awesome. Uh, You know, every time you see one of these UFO or uh, UAP videos, you always think, "Uh, why is the person filming with a potato? And finally, we're getting what looks like a modern day cell phone being used to film a UFO. (laughs) So that's pretty cool. Uh, No clue what that is, but I do know I've seen that shape several times in some of these depictions of UFOs that people have uh, claimed to eyewitness. So that was pretty fascinating. I feel like I just saw something that I've only seen in drawings before. Did the government fake the Apollo moon landings to assert dominance in the space race? Uh, No, to make money, actually. Mostly to make money. But yes, it absolutely was false. 
the amount of money that NASA has been able to to uh, bleed out of the government, actually out of your pockets because of taxation and things like that has been extraordinary. And of course, it's just funded the cabal. So NASA is a, is a cabal entity and pretty much almost everything that they have represented to people has been false to encourage, of course, uh, to justify, of course, their extraordinary hoarding of money. People would say spending of money, but it's actually been a hoarding of money. Um, and so they have to keep up the facade and they have to artificiate all kinds of things that look like they're doing spectacular things. So people will just be like, oh, yes, we are so happy that you are taking more money from us because we are really doing some best at some fantastic things. <laughs>That all makes sense to me. I don't trust NASA one bit. I don't believe that every single thing that comes out of there is a lie, but I believe that they are absolutely lying to us about some very important things. When you open this, this movie right here is Jurassic Park, for instance, okay? I'm just showing this to people who have never seen this. For the last 15 years that I have been using Sony Vegas and other editing software, and have gone through downloading movies and using them in our own video production, 100% of the time, it's either an MKV or an MP4. Occasionally, you'll download a torrent that's an AVI, not very often. And this is what it will always look like. One video file right here, one audio file right here, always. That's been my experience. Now, let me show you what happened when we downloaded and put... Uh, Sony put the uh, movie Leave the World Behind onto Sony Vegas. There you go. Stunning. Stunning. One video file, four audio files opened up. And this one, this fourth audio file, seems to be the weapon. This is a lo uh, ELF, a low, low frequency uh, infrasonic infrasonic wave right here and um so we we are gonna let me put the camera back on again so this is big news just just so people realize in in 15 years of video editing i have never downloaded and i'm speaking specifically a movie file okay a hollywood movie from a torrent downloading it in a, either mkv mp4 occasionally avi 100 percent of the time over a thousand movies I've done this with, you have video file, audio file, period. This is the very first time I've ever seen anything like this with the four files. Bonnie's going to go into now talking about the, the infrasonic sound waves and what we found out about that and the fact that there's one here. And the point is we're going to go back after Bonnie gives you some information about what, what it is we're dealing with, how this is a weapon. Then we're going to go back uh, towards the end of the live stream here, and I'm going to hit specific places where this weapon was used against anybody who watches it. Okay, so I actually did some digging on this, and from what I can see, this is actually to do with the new sound sp systems in movie theaters and stuff nowadays with the surround sound, and that frequency, uh, as suspicious as it does look. That frequency track is just strictly there for subwoofer frequencies. It's just there to assist their surround sound. To say there's absolutely no possibility that there's something nefarious going on with that track, I'm not going to make that claim because uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with that movie. Here's my question, though. The banks assess the value of that property, so... If they're going to buy a property and they're not even going to live in it, doesn't the bank still have to say, yes, that property is worth that amount of money before they purchase it and then take out a loan against it? Or are they just buying thousands of properties to wash lots and lots of money? Because if you buy a $50 million property, you still have to account for where that money came from. Some of that makes sense. Some of it, uh, I feel like we need a little bit more details, but we might be onto something there. There was a small little company that reached out to the Third Reich and said, hey, we need 150 participants for our clinical trial. The Nazi regime shipped 150 healthy Jewish women 
to this pharmaceutical company to test its products. Within six months, there's letters back to the Third Reich from this pharmaceutical company saying none of them made it through the initial phases of our trial. They killed 150 women. We kindly request that you send us another 150 women. That little company became Bayer. Now you jump forward to the 80s. Bayer launches a hemophilia drug. They inadvertently contaminate thousands of specimens with HIV. They know that they've contaminated specimens with HIV, this drug with HIV virus. What do they do? They shipped it into third world countries, Africa and Asian markets, and infected 20,000 people with the HIV virus. Just in case you needed another reason not to trust a pharmaceutical company, don't take my video down YouTube. This is about Bayer. <laughs> this is all just some absurd game, and we're never gonna know how life started and how life's going to end and the nature of consciousness and the nature of evolution and free will. And so some of these questions that we're never going to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. If this is a video game, can you change the nature of the game so that it's enjoyable to play just at the level of playing it? Mm -hmm. And that yes. was the thought that changed my life that, okay, if this is all a matrix, if none of this matters to the universe, if the universe isn't watching it, it doesn't care. Can I use this radical freedom? And this is what all the, all the philosophers in this place, they use different words, but it's the exact same idea of can you use radical freedom of, with all this deconstruction that you've done to now build a life that is worth living at the level of experience, not because the universe cares, not because of a truth claim, not because of a grand narrative, not because your actions will matter 10,000 years from now, but can you make the ride of life so enjoyable that you want to be on that ride just for the sake of yes. the ride? Yes. Can you bring back the magic of what it is to be alive? Not to get all philosophical here on y'all, but I like this video and it puts something into words that I always have trouble expressing to people. Um, if you, and I, and I like the analogy that she uses here as life is a video game. Um, we, none of us know what life is. None of us know what it's all about. We, some of us have beliefs in certain things, and that's what drives us. Some of us are living a nihilistic life of nothing matters, what's the purpose, what's the point. And I think if you have that perspective, but then you use her analogy of life as a game, and you get out of it what you put into it, and I think if you look at it like that, you can really change things around for yourself. Like if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, and you're running and running, and I don't play a lot of video games, but let's say that your guy's stamina runs out. I think that, that I think that happens in Grand Theft Auto. Your guy's stamina runs out. Are you going to just completely stop and stand there? Or are you going to keep running as fast as you can run until the stamina bar replenishes? You're going to keep running. You're going to keep playing the game. You're not just going to stop. And too many people in life just stop. I think a lot of the nihilism, the negativity and stuff stems from a lot of the lies and things that we're taught and that we're, we're supposed to be a lot more spiritual beings than what we are and that a lot of that is robbed from us at an early age. And so I just felt like this video was important. I liked the message of it and I wanted everybody that, that watches my channel to hear it. So uh, I hope you didn't skip that one. There's also a conspiracy theory about a movie that came out recently too. Movie. The Sound of Freedom. That whole thing is trying to give awareness about child Mm -hmm. Right? The theories, everyone who's gone into movies to watch it, the movie theaters have teamed they up. They stopped it. Yeah. Trying not to sell tickets, trying not for people to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen one where it's like, oh, the person tries to buy tickets. They said it's fully sold out. Mm. Goes in the movie theater, nobody there. There's no one in here. And then it said that they were sold out. Another one, the guy comes in, he's like, oh, we have to download the movie. It's going to take an hour. We can give you your movie back. Like, you guys can walk out. Bam. They're like that trying never to, happens. They're trying to stop them from watching it. Exactly. And the two main ones they have been doing, turn off the AC so it's hot as hell oh, in there. Oh, word. And then, just to let you guys know again, it is going to get hot. It is going to be like a movie. So why is it only this one, though? Not not all the other ones. The movies usually, yeah, yeah. then the lights, when it goes on, the lights stay on the whole time. And people mm. complain. I'm going to, 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 I'
Mm, so they don't want to stay there and watch the whole thing. There's a deeper conspiracy onto that. There's absolutely truth to that. I bet you I could sit here, I'd, I'd put a thousand dollars on it that I could come up with a three hour compilation of TikToks of people either getting lied to at the movie theaters or sitting in the movie theater and then all of a sudden the lights come on and they come in and say something's wrong with the projector and every one of them, it's all the sound of freedom. And if you watch that movie and you know who all's involved in the, the shady dealings that go on behind the scenes that that stuff's based off of, you'll realize real quick why that video was trying to be shut down. So I've been doing more research on the bunkers and I found something pretty interesting. The rumor everyone's talking about on X is that 15 billionaires have started building bunkers in the last week. Supposedly, they're all scheduled to be finished before winter of 2024. I've searched all over and I'm not sure where they're getting this information, so I can't confirm the legitimacy. But this is what I found that's pretty weird. Biden filed for a permit to build a top secret retaining wall at his Delaware property. This I can confirm the legitimacy of because I looked it up myself on the government website. But what could be so top secret about a retaining wall? There is speculation that this wall could be for the entrance of a vault or a bunker. I think the best argument for this is what Biden had to say during the time frame of this construction taking place. I'm on my vacation. I'm not. I have no home to go to. The Secret Service has torn my house up in a good way to make it secure. So I have no place to go when I come to Delaware except here right now. I'm only here for one day. And anyone who knows about this kind of stuff, please let us know if calling a retaining wall top secret on a permit is common. Could be nothing. I just wanted to share with you guys. But even if this is just for a plain old top secret retaining wall, I promise you Biden has a bunker somewhere. If I had to guess on this, they're probably just doing some remodeling of something. This just looks suspicious because of the timing, because all this other, all these other billionaires and stuff are building bunkers right now. Biden's the president. If something's going on, he knows about it, and he's going to be in a bunker somewhere else. He's not going to have a private bunker. He's going to be in something that was designed for the president of the United States. So... I don't think he's really wor worried about where he's going to go. Why they'll never be flying cars. We already have flying cars. They're called helicopters. They have to create a downward thrust of air equal to its own weight. If you're going to have a flying car, that's what it's going to have to do. They're noisy. They completely disrupt the terrain wherever they fly. So the issue is not that you want a flying car. You want to travel in that third dimension. We already do that. They're called tunnels. They're called bridges. When you have a huge intersection, you don't move people through one another. You build one road over the other. You build one road under the other. You are exploiting three dimensions so that traffic can go in perpendicular directions simultaneously. That's what the flying cars would have given you. But we do that at intersections because it would be impossible to move 12 lanes of traffic through an intersection that crossed another freeway. New York City has done this. You're in the streets. There's too many cars. You can't move. Let's move in the third dimension. Let's build a subway. This sounds like a guy who's trying to sell me something I'm telling that's you, better than a flying car. This is what it sounds like. I'm just, You're like, listen, I'm, man, that flying car is bullshit, and physics. I'll tell you why. You all know my prejudice against Neil deGrasse Tyson. I just don't like the guy. <laughs> he just rubs me the wrong way. I can't put my finger on exactly what it is. I know it's a lot of it's because he's so pompous and arrogant and so self-serving, uh, but there's something else to it. But anyway, anyway, he sounds like Ben Franklin trying to... Tell us why we don't need Tesla's free energy. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. This witness actually enters his parking garage and notices a group of people recording with their phones out. So he went up to them and asked them what was going on. They explained that they saw a little person or a dunde running across the garage. If you don't know what a dunde is, think of a gnome. He decides to pull out his phone and begin recording himself. The crazy part is, is he captures something not once, but twice. Take a look at this footage and tell me, do you think this is a little person, a dunde, or a gnome? What's the figure? I 
I've gone back and watched this like five times and it every single time just looks like a cat sticking its head up over, above those pipes and that, that duct work. We found a network of pedophiles among a global network of people who were selling kids back and forth to each other, trading them like candy. My name is John Paul Rice. For the people watching that may not know who I am, my friends know me. I'm an independent film producer. I've been in Hollywood for about 20 years. I started my film career. I remember the Titans. Uh, worked at Senator International, later Mandate Pictures, under the producers who did Juno, The Grudge, Harold and Kumar, Stranger Than Fiction, and uh, eventually The Hunger Games when they went back into Lionsgate. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk to everybody here today is because uh, over the last course of the last week or two, we have found out uh, without notification that Amazon.com, for which we have six of our movies on there, our film, A Child's Voice, which has been on there for over a year and a half in the UK, the United States, and now 70 other countries was suddenly, without notification, removed entirely from their platform. They unpublished it, and they made it not searchable in most of the sites. We've only tested a few outside of the United States, but the one in the United States, if you put in a child's voice in Amazon.com, you can't find it on the 1,100 pages that they'll give you back on your searches. The only way that you can get it is through a direct link, and we discovered this because the director's daughter had sent the links out to several of her friends when the Wayfair scandal broke, as well as the Maxwell files being released in the last 48 hours. And Amazon came back to us. They gave us a very standard corporate, non-committal response that said, we make a lot of changes, we do this and that and the other, we judge things based on performance. But they couldn't give us a very specific answer, and we all know what the answer is. What our movie did before Epstein was known about in the public and before Maxwell was known about in the public, is we found a network of pedophiles among a global network of people who were selling kids back and forth to each other, trading them like candy. It goes right in through Hollywood. If you look at the Daily Beast article, you'll see that Jeffrey Epstein had a pipeline right into Hollywood through Harvey Weinstein. That was last year. I've done a lot of deep dives and research into this, and there is a very satanic element to it for which we incorporated it into our movie. Our movie is a feature film. It deals with two teens, one who's a homeless heroin-addicted teen, hears the voice of a child who had been killed at the beginning of the movie, calls out for his help, and he goes on a mission to rescue a girl from these human traffickers. They come together, and then they stand up to this network in a spirit of love and courage for all of these children. It's a very beautiful film. It's been well-reviewed, well-received, critically acclaimed by the people that have reviewed it, and also many users by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, by the millions all over the world have seen this. So when we had all of this come up, we went viral with it on Twitter the other day, and it exploded because we still have one platform left here in the United States, and that's Vimeo.com On Demand. What I would like everybody to do is more importantly, I don't need to get back on Amazon. I already know what they're going to do, and they've got a stack of lawyers. But we're looking for alternative platforms where we can release this movie. Here's another good example of them trying to cut, shut down the media that's trying to bring a voice to the voiceless. It's sickening. All we can do is sit here and keep talking about it and bringing it to everybody's attention until everybody wakes up and realizes just how sick this Hollywood crap is. And maybe everybody will stop taking their money to the theaters start bringing their money to these independent companies like this, we'll start making a cultural shift and get some real change. Well, everybody, sorry to end on such a, a bummer of a note, but that's the end of this video. I'm out of clips for today. I will be back tomorrow with another one. It will be late in the evening, just like this one was. I hope you are all having a safe, wonderful day, enjoying the beginning of this new, beautiful 2024. Don't forget to live your life like a video game. Just keep doing something. Just keep moving forward. Just keep trying to reach your goal. I love you all. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one. Have a great, safe day. I'll see you tomorrow.